The FH-77BW L52 Archer, also known as Artillery System No. 8, is one of the best self-propelled howitzers, or SPH. It has many fascinating superior features. However, this SPH has not been successful in the international market. At the Weapon Detective, we are investigating the Archer, a brilliant artillery system but with poor international market performance. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all your likes, comments and shares. The Archer is the name of an artillery system, not just an SPH. Of course we will review the complete system, but we will focus on the SPH. Many experts acknowledge that the Archer is among the best in its class. Lots of countries have expressed their interest in this SPH. So why is Sweden its only user? Before seeking an answer to this question, let's briefly look at the history and features of the Archer. In the late 1980s, the Swedish artillery had two highly prized 155mm systems, the Band Cannon 1 and the FH-77, but they also had their own shortcomings. The Band Cannon 1 was a self-propelled gun, not an SPH, which means its barrel elevation angle was limited, and so was its range. The FH-77 had an auxiliary power unit, which provided 8 km per hour speed and assisted in the setting up, gun laying and loading functions. Still, it was just a field howitzer, not an SPH. So in 1989, the Swedish Defence Material Administration, First Verdets Materialverk, or FMV, started the APS 2000 study project to determine the requirements of a new SPH, which would overcome all the shortcomings of the existing artillery systems. The Swedes worked on all aspects of the system, such as rate of fire, range, ammunition, impact, etc., until 1992. The FMV also evaluated the carrier vehicles, the Volvo-made all-terrain articulated haulier and the tracked CV-90 hull. As you could predict, the winner was the former. During this period, Bofors had already developed and tested a variant of the FH-77 with a 52 caliber barrel. But when Sweden began the RMEO project in 1992, initiated after the APS 2000, the prototype SPH, called FH 77 AD, had the original production variant of the howitzer FH 77 A. It had a 38 caliber barrel. Bofors, which had been BAE system Bofors since 2005, was selected as the main contractor. Between 1995 and 1998, the prototype was subjected to extensive trials. In 1986, Bofors had developed the FH-77B variant with a 39 caliber barrel for India. Yet when this country had cancelled the second batch of the howitzer, the company had already manufactured 51 of them. The later two prototypes of the Archer, called FH-77BD, were fitted with these FH-77Bs acquired by the Swedish Army between 2002 and 2003. In 2003, the FMV ordered two new prototypes of a lengthened version of the FH-77BD. The prototypes of the current FH-77BW L52 entered firing trials in Sweden in 2005 and 2006. The new SPH, developed for the special conditions of Scandinavia, had naturally gained the interest of the other countries in the region during this period. First, in 2003, Denmark joined the project, but it withdrew three years later. In 2006, the FMV signed a contract with BAE System Bofors for detailed design work on the Archer. One year later, the next development phase was approved. In 2008, this time Norway became the partner of the project. The same year, Sweden ordered the first batch of seven units, while Norway won. The Archer was planned to enter service in 2011. But the unforeseen technical problems and the delay in delivering the ammunition handling system caused a two-year delay. Norway withdrew from the project in 2013, citing the issues experienced as an excuse. In 2015, BAE System Bufas delivered the first mass-produced variants to the FMV. The Swedish army officially took the Archer into service one year later. 
Initially, Stockholm and Oslo intended to purchase 24 archers each. When Norway withdrew from the project, Sweden decided to acquire the other 24 SPHs, which would be produced for the Norwegian army. 12 of them would be used by the Swedish army, and the other 12 would wait for a possible export sale. But considering the increasing tension in the region, in 2020, Stockholm decided to use all archers in the army and ordered an additional 24. The armoured crew cabin of the archer is resistant to small firearms and shell splinters. This CBRN protected cabin is positioned distant from the ground level to increase protection against landmines, and it can withstand the explosion of a 6 kg TNT equivalent explosion. It also protects the crew from adverse effects such as pressure and sound that may emerge during the firing. Separating the crew cabin and gun turret increases safety in case of an explosion of ammunition and charges. After all, the module charges and high explosive extended range shells used in the Archer are insensitive. There are automatic fire extinguisher systems in the engine compartment, turret and crew cabin to increase survivability. The storage module with four side drawers central to the hull can carry necessary supplies for a 24 hour operation. The crew can fully control the gun and turret functions without leaving the armoured cabin. Thanks to its highly automated design, the Archer can be operated by a single person if necessary. There are also manual backups for gun laying and feeding mechanisms. The Archer's deployment and redeployment times are less than 30 seconds each. This is a crucial capability against counter-battery fire. Thanks to its automatic loading system, the SPH can fire 13 rounds every 3 seconds in burst mode, or about 75 rounds per hour. Reloading the magazine, which holds 21 ammunition, takes 8-10 to 10 minutes. The munition carrier vehicle, which carries 100 rounds and consists of a folding arm crane equipped with an ammunition gripper and a roller ramp for the chargers, has a two-person crew consisting of a driver and a loader. Reloading is typically done by both crews via the ammunition handling system. The crew of the SPH can join this team to reduce reloading time. In general composition, all individual FH-77BWL-52 SPHs are supported by a munition carrier. The Archer can fire the Excalibur and the bonus ammunition. The Excalibur, jointly developed by Raytheon and BAE system Bofors, is a GPS and inertial guided munition. It has a range of approximately 60 kilometers, with a circular error probable of 4 meters. The Bonus, jointly developed by Nexta and BAE System Bofors, is an artillery cluster munition. It is designed for long-range, indirect fire, top attack rolls against armoured vehicles. A Bonus shell can travel up to 35 kilometers. The Archer has multiple rounds simultaneous impact capability, which means it can drop six rounds on the same spot simultaneously. The SPH also has direct fire capability at a range of up to 2,000 meters. The barrel is telescopic. While the archer is moving, the gun is retracted inside the turret. It is extended during fire. The SPH is fitted with the roof-mounted protector remotely controlled weapon station against close quarter threats. The archer is based on the 6x6 Volvo A30E articulated hauler. The vehicle has separate front and rear sections. Steering is made by pivoting the front relative to the back by hydraulic rams. The way the sections can twist in relation to each other, and the way the vehicle steers, making the back tyres follow the same path as the front tyres, provides excellent off-road capabilities to the all-wheel drive vehicle. The front and rear sections can move at large angles relative to each other, making for a small turning radius for a wheeled vehicle. The Archer is also fitted with independent suspensions and a central tyre inflation system to improve cross-country capability further. The SPH has a maximum road speed of 65 km per hour, but it is not actually a necessary or practical capability. Firstly, 65 km per hour is high for standard military convoy speed, and travelling at that speed causes rapid mechanical wear and excessive fuel consumption. The Archer can be transported by railway, and the A400M. The crew of the Archer is 3 to 4 people, consisting of a commander, a driver, and one or two operators. 
The SPH is 14.3 metres long, 3 metres wide, and 3.9 metres high. Its combat weight is 35,000 kilograms. The 340 horsepower Volvo D9B AC E3 diesel engine provides a maximum speed of 65 kilometres per hour. The range of the vehicle is 500 kilometres. The Archer can forward to a depth of 1 metre. The 155mm 52 caliber gun has a range of 30,000 metres with a standard projectile and 40,000 metres with an extended range full bore base bleed projectile. The rate of fire is between 8 to 9 rounds per minute. The elevation of the gun is between minus 1 and 70 degrees. The barrel can be traversed at 85 degrees on both sides. Currently the only user of the Archer is Sweden. Switzerland also shortlisted the SPH for its future artillery system competition in June 2022. Also, the US Army tested the Archer in the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. But since the early 2000s, many countries have expressed interest in this SPH. Some of them had even joined the program. But until today, the marketing efforts for the Archer have been fruitless. Many of them have chosen either the tracked SPHs or truck-mounted howitzers. But why? The basic logic of the truck-mounted howitzers is to mount a howitzer on a truck rather than tow it. This design criterion makes it a simple and compact system. A commercial truck offers easier maintenance and repair. Any truck mechanic without special training can maintain and repair it. Finding spare parts for a commercial truck with a widespread service network is easy and low cost. Many truck mounted howitzers have appropriate dimensions and weight to be transported by a medium cargo aircraft like the C-130. It is a disadvantage that the crew is without armour protection during firing. But this simple design also makes truck mounted howitzers less complex. A truck driver and an ordinary artillery crew can operate the system after a short training. However, the Archer's hull is the Volvo A30E. This articulated hauler is a more complex vehicle than an ordinary commercial truck, so a specially trained mechanic is required to maintain and repair it. The spare parts of an articulated hauler are more expensive and less available globally compared with a commercial truck. The Archer is a true giant. It can be transported by the A400M or C-17. Yes, its crew can fire the gun under armour protection, but also this design makes the SPH more complex. It increases the maintenance burden and costs. In addition, the Archer requires a specifically trained crew. We think that the BAE system Bofors unveiled the Archer modular export version installed on the 8x8 Rheinmetall RMMV HX2 truck to overcome this problem. As a wheeled SPH, the Archer has many advantages in terms of unit and life cycle costs, rate of fire, speed, fuel consumption, automation, etc. over the current tracked ones. Its only noteworthy disadvantage is its lesser off-road mobility but the differences are really insignificant except for the trench crossing capability. Yes, an articulated Horlia has better cross-country capability than a commercial truck, and its road performance is higher than a tracked vehicle. But also, an articulated hauler has less a cross-country capability than a tracked vehicle. It has a similar road performance to a commercial truck, but its costs are higher. All these arguments are dependent on the perspective. Soldiers are typically conservative by profession. They need a little more time to accept an innovative and different looking system like the Archer. At the Weapon Detective, our analysis is that for many countries to overcome this psychological barrier, this SPH must first prove itself in an international tender or in combat. After that, it would be an easy sell. We think that there is nothing wrong with the Archer, but there is something wrong with the perspective of its potential buyers. Thank you for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.